Hello everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Look, I'm not going to be long. It's been a real throwed off day. I mean, nothing terrible, anything like that, but it definitely did not start the way I expected. It has not gone the way I expected. But hey, that's life. Anyway, look, uh, for all my fam uh, who are a part of the Odyssey Project, the Black Voice, the teachers, the things that we do, Black Men Lead, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, uh, Restoring the Black Family, all the things that we represent for the past 30 plus years. Uh, if you believe in the work we're doing, the things we're fighting to do, the programs we're doing, the research we're doing, uh, and all that it entails, please show some love, show some support. Uh, look in the description box, click the link, give. You can give uh, via the organization's Cash App account. You can give predominantly through our uh, automated processing center that processes our uh, our contributions. But whatever you do, show some love and show some, show some support. Again, if you are uh, intrigued, informed, encouraged, inspired, uh, educated in any way by the content that you get on this channel and you are encouraged by it, you like it, whatever, uh, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Uh, this is what we are doing. Look, so, uh, short version, I'm going to literally do a series on this next week. Uh, anybody who has followed me for any stretch of time are aware that there are certain things that while I have covered the gamut of the enigmatic issues that plague the black community, uh, there are certain things that I'm immensely passionate about. Obviously, uh, at the top, and this is what we're going to talk about today, the restoration of the black family nucleus, uh, properly socializing, racial, so, racially socializing young black males, uh, providing resources for young females, uh, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, neglect, intimate partner violence, intimate partner, intimate, partner, intimate partner homicide, dealing with mental health and mental illness in the community. Uh, these are some of the things, healing, uh, generational trauma, and black group economics and wealth building. These are things that I have really truly hammered, hammered, hammered. Uh, but at the top of this list is the restoration of the black family nucleus. and. When I talk about this, when I survey, when I conduct studies and I have gathered so much data on the current state of the black community and how it directly relates to the disintegration of the black family. And the crazy thing and the scary thing about this is that as the black family has disintegrated, you can really start to trace massive rapid disintegration starting in the 60s and moving forward. And the vast majority of this was engineered, but in order for it to work, you have to participate. So in other words, without compliance, there is no real true uh, power force and racism. You have to in some way participate. You have to in some way cooperate. You have to in some way roll with whatever punches are thrown versus resist them. And I can't get into the vast array of the ways that we are literally participating in our own demise, but I'm gonna cover all this stuff in the upcoming week. What I can tell you is this, that one of the most powerful ways to interrupt any progress of any group is to first and foremost, emasculate the male population. Uh, place the male population in a situation where they either refuse to are not allowed to are are degraded in a way that they are not functioning in their roles as protectors, as providers, as leaders, as spiritual and physical coverings, as the source of identity for their progeny and so much more. The other way is to disrupt the base of the family, which is the marriage, the second institution. The second institution is the institution on which the primary institution of the family is built. You take the marriage and on the marriage you procreate, you have children, and these children are the projectors of the family values. In other words, two, two people come together who share values, who share 
uh, common goals, commonalities, common values, interests, and principles. In the sharing of these principles and values, they come together, they procreate, and through these children, they're going to project their values out beyond their own life. And this is in, in for the purpose of projecting and, and doing something that they care about beyond themselves. Now, the beauty of this thing in the family is you, for it to work, you have to care beyond yourself. You have to care beyond yourself in order to love your mate. You have to care beyond yourself in order to love your kids. You have to care beyond yourself in order to be willing to make the sacrifices and the contributions and the, uh, the, the commitments to do the things necessary so that people you'll never meet, your great-great-grandchildren's grandchildren, Will, will have a better place in this world because of the things you did while you were here. The problem is when you are convinced that um, the most important thing in this world is you, that everything else around this world has to be about you. If it's not about you, then something's wrong and you throw it away. Then you stop building because building requires you to build and contribute. Building and coming together and working with your mate requires you to see the needs of your mate in the same way that you see the needs for yourself. It doesn't mean stepping into a situation and allowing someone to take advantage of you. That's not what I'm talking about. It does not mean being in an abusive situation, being in a situation where you're not appreciated and respected. But what it does require is you to get with someone who is going in the same direction, loves you enough to make sacrifices so that you now need to make sacrifices and you build something together. Now, on the surface, that's the sociological side of it. That's the sociological uh, patterns for being. But what we don't realize is when we aren't functioning in the true uh, natural order of things, when we're not operating in men in our true masculine, masculinity, women in, the, in, in your true femininity, and we are not operating as the progenitors of a greater uh, civilization by way of our progeny, then it literally has a negative neurological and neurobiological impact. It impacts us epigenetically. It impacts us um, neurologically. It impacts us psychologically. It, it, it literally... Uh, the higher levels of depression that we're seeing, the higher levels of suicide, suicidation we're seeing, it's because of the lack of ability of walking in one's natural self, in fulfilling one's natural design, in functioning in one's natural role. And when you don't operate in your natural role, you can sit up and talk about all this independent this, all this, I, I'm a player that, all this, I don't need to settle down, all this, I can get that all this, you know, you, you know how many black women it is to one black man, all this, I got my own paper, I got my own money, I don't need a man, all this on both sides that's being pushed on you by people that don't even look like you, and you think the argument came from people that look like you, no, they pushed it on you, told you it was your fight, you took the fight, turned on one another, and now there's this thing, I'm not saying that there hasn't always been problems, you can't take a people and literally subjugate them for 246 years as chattel, then release them, but then unleash hell that's that's worse than the things they experienced when they were chattel and expect there not to be anti-social behavior in the way that they handle and behave with one another. This is not an excuse. This is simply the reality of how things are operating and working. So then what must we do? We must be willing to look at this and say, hey, I am no longer going to be a participant in this. I am going to start to value the very things that we need to practice in order to build without a stable environment where there is masculine and feminine energy present simultaneously, consistently. You cannot adequately and effectively rear children that are going to be pro-social, pro-power, and consistently functional once they are exposed to the many mechanisms and machinations of a system designed to destroy them. We have to acknowledge that. We're going to have to realize. We can play this guy. We can play, hey, look, look what I'm doing. I can do this and I can be over here and I can be by myself. Look, I can do more by myself than I can with this person. The problem is what happens when you're gone? Who, uh, let's, let's say everybody's about the bag now. So the bag says that I made it and I'm successful and I'm the person. I'm that dude. I'm that chick. Let me ask you a question. When, 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 when you're gone, if all you ever had was the bag, 
How long will it be when you're gone before people forget what you drove in 2020? Where you lived, what 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 type of shoes you were wearing on this particular thing? What happens here? How many trips you took here? How 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 long do you think they're gonna talk about that after you're gone? You know they're not gonna do it long because there's gonna be somebody following you doing the same damn thing. You know what they will talk about? How many lives you changed? What your children are doing that is exceptional and extraordinary beyond what's average? What you built? What you left behind? How you connected? How you loved on your people? How you you stood for something, how you fought against the status quo, how you left an imprint. I say this all the time, that the first half of my life was about me. It was about doing all that stupid shit that I realized was never going to be a legacy. The second half is about my legacy. The second half is what will you do that's going to speak for you and of you after you're gone. And it starts with building homes that are safe, and, 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 and virile for the upbringing of powerful black minds, young children who are doing exceptional things because they are brought up in an environment that nurtures them, that strengthens them, that, that empowers them. I'm trying to get you to understand we can't keep doing what we're doing. I could go on and on this, but I'm going to set up a series next week. Uh, those of you, anybody of you that, any of you that knows someone who is an expert in this area that you want to see be a part of this discussion, get them on because we're coming and we're going all out. But I'm trying to get you to understand. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I've done research. You cannot function and produce a people. And again, we're not a monolith, but we are unique and we are a part of something special and common. And because of that, we have to recognize that we are feared, we are hated, and we are seen as a threat because of that commonality. And it's that very commonality in unity, in function, in purpose, in agenda, in strategy, in, in, in direction that's going to determine whether or not we survive this whether or not we thrive, whether or not we rise to the capacity of our potential, or we fade into the darkness of an abyss of underachievement. It's going to be up to us to make that determination, but it comes with the restoration of the black family nucleus. We will come up with every argument, every situation. Well, we really never had a true black fan. The hell we didn't. Uh, the stuff that people will come up to make to create some sort of narrative that doesn't challenge us to live. I'm not talking about westernized behavior. I'm talking about family nucleus and the nucleus of every family is the masculine energy of the male and the feminine energy of the female. And that has to be presence. That's the universal balance of nature. You don't get to escape that. You don't get to decide you want to circumvent it or you want to usurp it or you want to move around it. You are going to have to walk in it. So on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Uh, like I said, it has been a very, very crazy day. So I'm going to try to my, get my head around. You guys keep me lifted. Um, I'm concerned about one of my cubs. So you guys keep me lifted. Um, um, I'm going to war and uh, one thing I'll tell you is and I guess it kind of ties into this I never really even thought about it but I'll tell you something I have always said people talking about I can't wait till my kids get grown trust me you haven't seen parenting at, 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 at an intense and anxious level until your children get grown and you can't always have your hand on them and you don't always know what they're doing and then when you do find out it's all kind of things going on, but I go to war. And so you guys keep me lifted. But uh, at the end of the day, we are going to have to stand up and be strong in this area. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys, I appreciate you for your time. Have an unbelievable day. Don't forget, if you believe in the work we do, go in the description box and give. If you like the content that you are getting, hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe. 
on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.